on a trouvé un partenaire de choix euh, en Radio Moine. Et les premiers résultats étaient tellement euh, encourageant mm -hmm. qu'on s'est dit pourquoi pas essayer de le faire euh, avec une plus large audience. On fait 150 campagnes par an en ce modo et 80% de nos campagnes utilisent des mécaniques de, de, de retargeting et de, et de RTB. Mm -hmm. Et Radio Moine euh, justement contribue à ce, type, à ce type de mécanique. Radio Moine a représenté à peu près 50% des inscrits euh, sur l'ensemble du plan média. Je trouve ça génial parce que ce qu'on a fait par exemple avec Radio Moine et ZAM sur, sur le lancement de la 4G, ça permet justement d'utiliser tous ces formats créatifs d'une façon beaucoup plus productive et beaucoup plus rentable pour le business. Donc ça ouvre des perspectives que je n'avais pas avant. Et donc on est en train de travailler avec Radio Moine sur des, euh, des possibilités de campagne euh, in-app. Vous êtes excellent sur beaucoup de dimensions qui font la différence sur le marché du programmatique. Vous êtes là entre différents acteurs pour leur apporter votre expertise par rapport à ces outils tout en étant en fait un peu dans cette notion de comment les aider à mieux optimiser leur investissement publicitaire. C'est là où Programmatique peut nous aider à aller chercher cette audience via la data propriétaire de Radio Moine, une data tierce qu'on peut aller chercher via des partenaires. Et donc clairement, clairement un enjeu. On a commencé avec Radio Moine les premières campagnes au mois de mars qui marche très bien. Au lieu de faire une campagne classique avec une diffusion sur un clip sur YouTube simple, on va du coup utiliser toutes les solutions de data et de programmatique pour justement toucher toute la communauté de l'artiste et aller au plus près de notre cible pour maximiser l'efficacité de nos campagnes de communication. Um, it's, always, ooh, it's always better to let clients speak. As you can guess, I'm not going to talk about what Radium does. It's better than clients, brand marketers, CMOs. Every company probably in this room has a business to do with digital and digital transformation. I'm not going to talk about Radium 1. What is uh, one of our favorite topics today is the conundrum that all of us are facing because of digital transformation around the world and in, particularly in this dynamic region. Sorry, the video was a bit in French, a bit in English because here I know many nationalities, many languages, and uh, you speak so many languages here. One thing about, of course, my topic is about digital marketing transformation, new business models compared to old business models, and the topic is uh, about the landscape. Familiar, you're all familiar with advertising and marketing media landscape. Normally, it's a You've seen that in the past, it's like a page with plenty of logos like chicken pox. Every month for the last six years, there's more logos. Today, there's 4,000 companies in this sector. But it's not a flat landscape, like the earth is not flat. It's a Darwinian pyramid where at the top, you've got the, the big gorillas that are sucking everything. And at the bottom is the new breed of companies. And in the middle, there's a mix of new and old companies trying to survive to provide services to you. And all of this ecosystem is actually a pyramid. When you think about how much billions you get from zero to the top, the concentration of, of money is like this for the future. It's going to be like this. 80% will go directly or indirectly to a few guys, and innovation will be hindered. So when we have to keep this in mind, it's a bit like between the barbaric new models. Someone talked about Uber. What about the taxi business and the transportation and automotive business? things are going to be much more frugal, do more with less resources, human financial resources. We have to optimize. Every company is basically in a, in a digital transformation situation. And the topic is about being consumer-centric. It's easy to say, but people are fast-moving consumers, and they are on many different screens. So being consumer-centric is really the only single via ferrata, the link, the direction. And being full funnel as a CMO, thinking about branding, sorry, I'm waving my stick, I'm, I'm trying to leave that, uh, will be the sword. How do you do lower funnel and upper funnel all together, not having the advertising on one side and the digital acquisition on the other side? I'm not, I don't like prophecy, but I like Abraham Lincoln. He used to say, you know, prophesizing is only uh, the topic of a few people, but I like to listen to experts like they are in the room. It's very difficult to say where we're going, what is happening in... But one question is about, if you look at the situation, there's going to be people that are going at the digital banquet in the plate or at the table. 
in terms of not com companies and people. And that's what's interesting. If we think about the economic growth projection in the next 10 years in Western economy from Japan to US, Canada, to every company, it's going to be less than 2.5% growth, which means we're all about managing charge in telco, automotive, even in consumer goods. It's managing charge or maintaining market share. 2.75 less inflation is like very difficult growth. Some business model, Uber, Airbnb, are going to fast grow. What about the other, the Nestle's of this world? It's this kind of situation, managing churn and maintaining market share by being more innovative, more frugal with resources. There's one thing I like about a guy called Levi Raju. He's got plenty of vision. I'm not the one. And I use his advice. Disruption. We all use this word for the last 10 years too much. He says it's about what, not what you know, but how do you manage what you don't know? Because you haven't, we haven't seen coming. I didn't see it coming Uber. So there's plenty of new business models that are coming. And, they have, and it's about managing what you don't know, learning to manage what we don't know. And it's about frugal innovation, because, again, doing more with less. Because there's going to be less of everything. We all think, OK, it's not the crisis. I'm not saying this. It's how do we get better being leaner, being, employing resources faster? Because in this game between the traditional models and the new models, it, there's one sentence that I like is that competition, it's all about competition, the gap widens when some people think they innovate, but they do only catch up innovation. Whereas the Uber of this world do pioneer innovation. A bit like the Dubai Vision City. They didn't just play it like a city, they played it like a complete new, different urban and civilization experience. They saw it forward compared to the other cities. That's the thing that makes the difference. Because if you look at financial valuation, very economic metric again. Look at all these companies. I could line up the, on the right-hand side is the traditional player. On the left-hand side is the new players. They have financial valuation. It's wrong for Tesla, actually. The company in the last eight weeks grew $30 billion more in valuation. They have been 10 years old, and they are already valued more than any company's household brand names that we know. And this is the topic. Organization, we all know that in large companies, there's a topic about, if I think about CMO organization, when I say CMO is brand marketers, we know that, you know, there's the mobile guy, the e-commerce guy, the branding guy, the uh, acquisition guy, there's a digital strategy guy, the user experience guy. They're all marketers, they all have topics. They have budgets, software, tools, resources, but they're all in silos. They have data and it's scattered around. They have budgets, it's scattered around. The topic about Boston Consulting Group, where they talk to all these top 1,000 Fortune Global companies, it's all about saying, look, there's a lot of optimization to be done there by being more data-driven, by making things work together. The advertising guy has to work with the acquisition guy because you are duplicating your resources, your messages to consumers. How do we make this happen? This is the direction. It's not easy, but it's interesting, it's exciting, and it's makes us more brainy, more smart, smarter, sorry. Because consumers' touch points are getting completely changed. We use three to four digital screens from TV to tablet to get in touch with brands or to use them as services like, like when we are consumers. This is complex. I can see an ad on TV. I can look for information on a website, I can search for it, I can geolocate it with my mobile. This is consumer touch points, and every touch point is managed by a different part of the organization. This has to be connected, connect the dots, because otherwise we are not being consumer-centric. That's what our company does for this client that you saw in the video before. Because when you look at the best global business, one minute, global business, I'm almost finished, is that we know that the, if you think about the CMO organization resources, part of the money, is for certain tax, lower funnel, loyalty, retargeting, these kind of things, CRM. And the other is about image, value, value the immaterial value of brands. What makes Dell less sexy sorry, than Apple? When we know Dell makes better computer than Apple, just because we like better Apple. Brand value, immaterial brand value. 
That's the upper funnel. And we need to manage both because globally that's $607 billion that needs to be optimized if you split it by each company. And that's where it has to be connected. It's a full funnel approach with brand performance. Eight years ago, Deloitte Digital, every year they do a research about the lifespan, the life duration of a CMO in an organization. It went from 26 months to 18 months in eight years. It's a tougher, exciting job. It needs a lot of teamwork and create an ecosystem. But that makes how difficult it is. Production has been optimized. Management of people has been optimized. The marketing needs to be more optimized. And today, Boston Consulting Group talks to the CEO and says, Look into your marketing, there's 25% efficiency gains to gain there. That's what we do with the guys that you saw in the video before. If you look at another big trend, cloud computing, what is it for? It's going to be 15-fold in the next seven years in terms of investment in every organization, public, private, etc. What is it made of? All these cloud farms, all these server in the cloud, all these applications in the cloud. It's about data. What is it made for? For data. We're all going to be data-driven organizations with a careful use of data and optimization. And this is a big trend that means, what am I doing as an organization? What's my cloud data-driven strategy? Because this is happening. This is truth. This is fact. And finally, we all know that you know, it's more and more technology. We have become like a bit human to talk about transhumanism. Human technology robots. And there's a guy that I like as well called Joel Doroné, if you Wikipedia him, is a biology. He likes life. He's very famous about this Nobel Prize, etc. topic. But he's saying, even him, he likes life, nature, biology. He says, I'm less scared about artificial intelligence than my own stupidity as a human. My own stupidity. How do I not change or accept to change, even if it's difficult sometimes? Even I want to keep to do what I'm doing. 